Here we go. It's just picked up the pie. Charging up nicely. Wait for it to deploy the payload. Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to turn your Raspberry Pi Zero into a rubber ducky, probably for less than £10. Um, now the first thing to say is that this video is for educational purposes and I take no responsibility for what you do with your rubber ducky, um, that is your full responsibility. So this video is for educational purposes only. Uh, this is going to be a full walkthrough and I'm going to show you from kind of the beginning from the beginning to the end how to create uh, this little small uh, hackable device that you can plug into a computer and use the Raspberry Pi, uh, sorry, use the USB port to deploy code, uh, prank somebody, uh, access files, etc. So first of all, um, big thanks out to Aussie Zach Raspberry Pi Zero Rubber Ducky Ducky Pi. Uh, the link to the GitHub repository is below, which is what I'm using. Um, you can obviously follow through the instructions I give you, but also afterwards um, you can link through and follow updates on this website. The first thing you need to do then is get your USB um, SD card reader and the first uh, stage is to flash the uh, operating system onto the, onto the SD card for the Raspberry Pi. So I'm now going to plug this in. Okay, and I'm using the Raspberry Pi Imager, which is available from their website, although other images are available. I'm going to click yes. And at the moment, they're recommending using Raspbian Lite. So I'm going to go to choose the operating system. And that's the recommended desktop one, but I'm going to go with a different version. And I'm going to go with this one, Raspbian OS Lite. Click this. Choose the SD card, which I've just plugged in, and then begin writing it. Now this today takes several minutes, depending on the speed of your internet connection, and also depending on the speed of your computer. So as your SD card finishes um, completion, you will obviously have your Raspberry Pi operating system now installed onto the card. So we can now close that and we're ready to move on. Now you can at this point plug the um, SD card into your Raspberry Pi if you have a monitor. Um, however I'm going to show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi uh, on your internet so that you can access it over the remote shell. So the first thing you're going to need to do is make the first file which is simply going to be a text document and um, we're just going to call this SSH. Okay. Now I like to use uh, Notepad++, uh, which I'll leave down below in the link, but this is quite good for um, writing programs and code. Um, the second uh, file you're going to need to do is the uh, WPA file, um, the configuration file for your Raspberry Pi. And you can Google this, you can, um, you can type into Google how to connect my Raspberry Pi to the internet without a monitor um, and you'll get lots of uh, similar pages to this. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to create another text pad, uh, sorry, another, um, another text file which is going to include this information. So I'm going to copy this here and again I'll pop this down in the, um, in the discussion notes below. I'm going to go back to a desktop, right click, new text file. Okay, uh, for the moment I'm just going to leave it as that and I'm going to copy and paste this in. Now obviously you need to change this to your credentials, so country UK, add in your SSID, um, whatever your um, Wi-Fi is called. and then obviously enter in your password. Okay, so change that. Then obviously file, save, 
close it. Now this file needs to be called, uh, if we go back to the website, uh, this needs to be called WPA supplicant config file. So I'm basically going to uh, copy that. Okay, might just have to uh, <laughs> write it from here. So I'm just going to rename this uh, all lowercase WP WPA dash S U P P L I C supplicant dot config file. And um, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah. So this one contains my um, Wi-Fi credentials and this contains an SSA SSH file which will allow me to remotely connect to my Raspberry Pi. Next step then is to go to the Raspberry Pi, find the boot folder. So here it is here, E boot, and then you're going to simply just drag these two files onto the boot folder. Okay, like that. Not into the overlays, onto the normal one there. And that will hopefully, when we boot up, um, connect you to the internet and then also create um, the SSH file. Um, before we actually boot it up, uh, if you haven't used SSH, you can use this program, which is called Putty. Um, if you Google how to download Putty, it'll take you to the website. And you can download it here, and then uh, once it's installed, you can then obviously connect to your Raspberry Pi, which is what I'll show you how to do um, in a minute. Um, remember, this is if you don't want to use the monitor. So the easy solution to this would obviously be to simply take the SD card out, plug it into your uh, uh, Raspberry Pi, or attach a monitor to your Pi Zero, and then boot it up from there and go through the configuration process. So let's uh, boot up the Raspberry Pi and have a look at what we need to do next to install the Rubber Ducky software. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to load up Putty, and uh, we're going to need to put in the host name or the IP address. Now you can put in Raspberry Pi for the host name, but it doesn't always find the uh, the Raspberry Pi. So we'll try it, but it often times out. Oh, <laughs> it worked in this example. Um, so obviously, I'll come back to this minute. You can press yes and then connect. Um, if it doesn't pick it up, which happens sometimes, what you'll need to do is find the Raspberry Pi IP address. And there's two ways you can do this. Number one, if you've got an app on your phone that checks for IP addresses of devices on your Wi-Fi network, you can use that. Or the other option is to uh, go to the command line. So I'm going to type in CMD. And I'm going to type ARP-A. And this gives me a list of all the connected IP addresses. Now um, you might have to work through them or you might know which ones are already your Raspberry Pi. Um, sorry, you may know what these IP addresses already are assigned to and therefore you can work out which one is the Raspberry Pi. Um, this one here for me, 192.168.1.213 is the new one. So I'm going to use this as the IP address. Uh, 1.213 and this will connect me to my Raspberry Pi but let's go back to the other option which we had was just typing in Raspberry Pi worked which is probably easier than trying to find the uh, IP address and the credentials of the standard Raspberry Pi logins and I'm now into my Raspberry Pi. So the next stage, if we go back to the website, is to install uh, a number of pieces of software. So if we scroll down, uh, the first one is this. So if you're using the GitHub website, you can click on this link here, or it's down in the um, the code. In, sorry, it's down in the um, comments below. Right click, and it will install it. Okay, then we need to go to Shmode Setup, 
So we're basically copying and pasting that in. And then finally, copy and paste this one in. Once you are done, then your Raspberry Pi is ready to go. And we can uh, boot. So let's shut down. So we can uh, shut down. And then we're ready to set up the Raspberry Pi for our Ducky Hacks. Once the Raspberry Pi has uh, shut down, we can safely remove the SD card. Um, we're going to put the SD card back into the SD card reader and then add the uh, USB back to our computer. And there we go, it's installed it. And this is the bit where we're going to add the Ducky scripts. Um, now, I'm not going to go into detail about how to create Ducky scripts, I'll do a separate video on that. But if we scroll down and click ready made ducky scripts there are some fantastic pre-made scripts here already okay so let's uh, let's have a look at one so we've got ducky download lock your computer message restart pranks or restart your computer that's quite cool um, so let's try that one out we're going to click on there okay in fact, I don't think I want to do that one yet. Let's go to the paint hack. That's quite a nice one. So click on that paint hack. I'm going to select all of this, copy. I'm then going to go back to my notepad. Remember, I'm using notepad++. Plus 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 and start a new one. Paste that in. And then we we'll go File, Save As. We we'll go to USB Drive. boot folder here we go I'm in the wrong place going to go to the boot folder and we are going to paste this file into here okay now it needs to be called um, it has to have a certain name so let me just show you um, actually what I'm, what I'm going to do is make to make this easier we're going to save this on the desktop Right, I'm going to just call this new one at the moment. Save on the desktop, close that down. Now, if I go into the file browser, um, we're going to go into the Google disk, the boot. Okay, the file needs to be called, uh, where is it? Here we go. The file needs to be called payload.dd. Now, one option is to simply right click and then we can edit this with Notepad and then we can copy and paste the code in. You can see when I've got one on there already for YouTube. Or what we can do is go back to our file here. Okay, and we can rename that payload.dd. Has to be called that. So, what I'm going to do in this one is simply uh, go back to back to the paint, copy it, and going back to the boot folder, right click, edit with notepad, select all of that, add this one in, press save, close that, and that is now saved into the Raspberry Pi. Oh, sorry, saved on the SD card for ready for the Raspberry Pi. I simply close this down, and then what I'm then going to do is reconnect this to the Raspberry Pi, and we'll see what the hack does. So here we're going to try out the uh, Ducky Pi. Um, you can see I've added the SD card there. And um, the other point for your attention is that you need to add the USB cable to the USB um, micro USB port, not the power. Okay, so we're not using the power jack here, we're using the micro USB port. And uh, as you saw earlier, I've got the paint demo installed. So I'm going to plug this into my USB port. And we're going to wait for it to uh, boot up. Now, the first time you plug it in, you might end up with a scenario where um, it installs the USB. 
Okay, so you might get something like this where it says the USB isn't recognized um, because it needs to install it. That would mean then you'd have to unplug it and plug it back in again. Um, as I said, this is only for educational purposes. Um, and you know, just to be aware, if it doesn't work straight away, this might be why. Um, that's the paint hack. Um, I'll show you some other ones because there are some very good ones. But remember, they're all for educational purposes. In this uh, hack, um, we're going to have a look at uh, Rick Roll, which is here. You can probably guess what happens. The uh, rubber ducky, pie ducky, is going to load YouTube and Rick Roll us. So remember, we copy it, we go to the boot menu. this one in, press save and close that and now I'm going to add it to the Raspberry Pi and pop it into the computer get rip rolled. Film with the new iPhone 13 Pro and share it on the UK's best network. Of course, you've got beautiful videos. So in this um, payload, I'm going to basically uh, add it so that it, when you plug in the Raspberry Pi Ducky, it opens up a website. So we're going to go to boot. Go into the payload DD notepad. You can change this. And example one, we're going to write in my website techoed.com. I think it's actually dot code UK. <laughs> Here we go. Right, save. That saved onto the Raspberry Pi. We're going to close that. I'm going to eject this. And we're going to plug it in. Boot this up on the Raspberry Pi. So here we go. It's just picked up the Pi. Charging up nicely. I'll just wait for it to deploy the payload. And let us load it up the website. Nice. So, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, this is for educational purposes only.